go right ahead and get into NBA and its rivalry week. Now, again, I had no idea that rivalry... Mm, can I speak English, please? I had no idea that rivalry week was like a really... was a thing that the NFL was looking forward into pushing, I guess you could say. Like, I thought it was sort of just like, you know, a thing. Like, you know, it was just there. And it sort of seems like the narratives, like, you know, behind these kinds of games are going to build up as the season goes on. Like, they're going to, the NBA is going to try to, and the media is going to try to force some rivalries, when in reality, it doesn't really feel like there are many rivalries in the NBA now. Like, everyone is really nice with each other. Everyone is, you know, they say all these great things about each other. There isn't a, a time where it's like, this one guy and like this other guy on two different teams or on two different franchises just absolutely despise each other. Like, I mean, maybe now, like, we'll see the Knicks and the Pacers rivalry stir up once again, but that thing started all the way back in like in the 90s. So it's not like we don't have many new rivalries, I guess you could say. And like, there are some exceptions, as you'll see later down the road on this list, but again, it doesn't really feel like their rivalries like the atmosphere around it the the pressure around these games it doesn't feel like a rivalry game now they also the nba also released um their national tv games and some of the you know teams that ended up getting a large increase in national tv games for this coming season are the timberwolves with 15 the thunder with 12 the Knicks with nine, the Pacers with eight, and for some reason, the Houston Rockets with seven. Now, this is obviously, you know, a result of the new media rights deal that the NBA signed, allowing them to have more nationally covered games. So as a result, we're going to have way more games to watch in the, in the NBA season, as opposed to last year, where it was like, you know, you only had that one primetime game and a couple of other games. Now it's like every game is going to be on national TV. And Timberwolves and the Thunder may to make total sense. They're franchises that are somewhat irrelevant until they have that one great player. Like, the Thunder... I, I, I can't even say that the Thunder have been irrelevant, but they've been a little... They, they haven't really been as popular as they were now because now they actually realize that their team is, like, you know, winning. And the Timberwolves, they barely get popular, like, at all. And, and a big part of that is because of Anthony Edwards and his prowess in the postseason. Now, the Knicks, they... Once, when the Knicks get good, they always get national TV games. It always happens. They always get a boost in national TV ratings because everyone... Everyone watches the Knicks. Whether you watch them to see them fail, whether you watch them because, you know, they're the Knicks or, like, they're good or this, that, and the other. They're a very popular franchise. And... It only makes sense that they got an increase in national TV games. The Pacers, they also got a huge increase with eight. And it makes sense because of, you know, Halliburton and just how good the squad really is. The Rockets are the only team that I have no idea why they have so many nationally televised games. But maybe it's because they want to sort of push in that rookie that they got, right? But but aside from that, and aside from maybe Sengun or maybe even shoot, I don't even know. Like, why, I don't know why the Rockets would have such a huge increase in these games. Like, I would have, I would have rather seen a team like shoot, I don't know, maybe Miami have an increase in these national TV games as opposed to a team like Houston. But I digress. So rivalry week. Now this rivalry week starts on the twenty first in. January. So a little bit later than the NBA like in-season tournament, I believe. And, you know, it's going to be around the time where I believe the NFL is going to die down. So that way the NBA is going to be able to play a lot more games as opposed to, you know, constantly playing these NFL games. So the first rivalry game is the Knicks going up against the Nets. Obviously, the rivalry there is just the fact that they are both teams in the same city. And, you know, same city teams usually always have rivalries, but in the NBA, it doesn't really feel like a rivalry. Again, like, these these might be rivalry games, but they don't really feel like rivalry games, because it's like, 
either one is good or either one is bad at least between the knicks and the nets and it's like you usually can tell which team is going to end up coming out on top and i mean maybe now there's like a little bit of bitterness because the the knicks recently just you know traded for mccall bridges and now the nets are just not not good but i don't really see that as like a big big rivalry game i don't know that's just me Next is Joel Embiid going up against Nikola Jokic, the Nuggets going up against Philly, and not only do they have a matchup between Jokic and Joel Embiid, but there's also going to be Russell Westbrook matching up with Paul George as well, and I mean, we know the history of Russell Westbrook and Paul George. They almost, well, they didn't really almost do anything now that I think about it. Um, they, they played really well in OKC, but again, they only made it as far as the first round, so... The fact that they're former teammates somewhat somewhat makes it a rivalry, again, somewhat. And it's really Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. But if the game is going to be played in Denver, I don't think Joel is going to be playing. He never plays in Denver. Next game on this list is the Timberwolves against the Dallas Mavericks. Again, this is sort of like you know a new rivalry given the, the playoff series and how they played. And, you know, it's just going to be pretty interesting seeing a rematch of these two teams. Next is the Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings. I totally understand this as a rivalry. The Sacramento Kings, they made the postseason in that one year, and Steph Curry dropped 50 points on them at home and ruined their chances of making a deep playoff run. And that's gonna that stings a lot of Kings fans. That really does sting a lot of Kings fans. They don't like the Golden State Warriors. I they bring up the fact that Klay Thompson went 0 for 10 in an elimination game religiously to the point where it is ingrained in everyone's heads. And like I mean, if Steph Curry did that to my team, I would despise the Warriors as well. So that's not that bad of a rivalry game. Next is Miami against the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis against Jimmy Butler, they had, you know, a little bit of a history going up against each other in the postseason. It's usually back and forth. The Miami Heat end up winning, then the Bucks end up winning, then the Miami Heat end up winning. Whether you consider the Miami Heat and the Bucks a rivalry or not, or whether you think that the Celtics are a better rivalry against the, um, the Miami Heat, this is still a really good game and something to look forward to. Next is the Lakers going up against the Boston Celtics. Based pretty basic, like the two most gifted and the two most uh, decked out, I guess you could say, teams in NBA history. And, I mean, it only makes sense that there's going to be a Lakers versus Celtics matchup in there at one point. Next is Zion against Ja Morant, so Memphis against the Pelicans, or the Pelicans against Memphis, if you want to go in that order. And a lot of people are thinking, why is this a rivalry? Because these guys are, you know, really good friends. And this is sort of where I think that the rivalry games are sort of dipping because it's like everyone likes each other. And Zion and Ja are a pretty good example. And the biggest reason why they often get put it head to head was because they're in the same draft class. Ja Morant was, um, well, Zion was expected to win rookie of the year. But because of his off the court problems... John Morant ended up playing more games, and John Morant ended up winning the award. And not to mention, those two players, now that I think about it, they're kind of cursed with off-court luck. I mean, you have Zion Williamson, who allegedly eats too much, according to the media, and then you have John Morant, who allegedly pulls out a fake gun, pulls out a real gun, whatever he does, allegedly. And, well, I mean, allegedly, it's on camera. And it's like, you know, he shows it off, and it's like, you know, these things, they hurt their their careers, but they both have flaws that both hurt their careers equally. Like, the media will either like Zion, and then they'll clown him. The media will either like Ja, and then they'll clown him, right? Like, it's, um, it, they, have, they have a lot of similarities, especially, you know, being dunkers, too. And... Next game is the Nuggets against the Timberwolves. Again, not really, not really much of a rivalry when you think about it, but it's the fact that they met up in the postseason and the postseason went down the way that it did because the Nuggets, they were up by so much at home and then all of a sudden the Timberwolves ended up coming out of nowhere and beating them in the end. Or actually, wait, no, it was the, uh, it was the other way around now that I think about it. They were playing in Minnesota. That's my bad. Uh, but then again, like, I mean... These guys, like, they were up by so much, and then they just dropped it. And then finally, 
well, not really finally, actually. There's fi- there's two final games left. The Lakers against the Warriors. Obviously, LeBron and Steph. That's a rivalry. Like, it's been a rivalry for the longest time. And finally, like, actually finally, the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. This is a finals rematch, not to mention the beef that they have with Kyrie Irving. So, makes sense. That's rivalry week for all of you guys. And with that, we are out of time for this first segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the second segment where I redo one of the segments that I was supposed to do on the, that was supposed to be uploaded on the YouTube side. So for those of you guys on the audio side, if you guys have followed the podcast and you've seen this um, podcast episode of the best point guards, then you can go ahead and skip it because, you know, I'm basically going to be covering the exact same things. So I'll be right back. Feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my sound. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the 